Welcome back to Ghost Pirate Entertainment. I'm your host, Kanan Becker, and here's a compilation of my 23 favorite werewolf horror movies that I've talked about on this channel. And with that, let's get to the list! Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by Night is a 2022 action creature feature TV special. Directed by Michael Giacchino and based on the Marvel comics of the same name, it stars Gail Garcia Bernal, Laura Donnelly, and Harriet Sanson Harris. The plot follows a lycanthrope superhero who fights evil using the abilities given to him by a curse brought on by his bloodline. Tonight, it is every hunter for themselves. Good luck. So when this came out last Halloween, it did get some buzz, but not nearly as much as I think it deserves. And I guess they're re-releasing it this year and colorizing it. Which I get because I'm guessing it'll get a little bit wider of an audience. A lot of the younger crowd, that whole black and white thing just turns them off. But at least for me personally, I loved that it was black and white. It just was such a cool throwback and paid homage to all those classic horror movies, all those universal classics. And I thought it was beautifully done. It's well directed. The cinematography is fantastic. The CGI and special effects are impeccable. It's full of action and fun gore with some really unique creature designs. It's only about an hour long, so it's really an easy watch, but it's one that I think is perfect for the Halloween season and a film that I highly, highly recommend. Red Riding Hood is a 2011 adventure horror movie directed by Katherine Hardwick and produced by Leonardo DiCaprio. It stars Amanda Siegfried, Gary Oldman, and Billy Burke. The story is loosely based on the folktale Little Red Riding Hood, set in a medieval village that is haunted by a werewolf, where a young girl falls for an orphaned woodcutter, much to her family's displeasure. So I've never really got why this movie didn't catch on more, why there was not more buzz, why more people didn't enjoy it. I'm not saying it's a game changer. You know, this is an underrated list. This isn't best of, so to speak, but I think it's a lot of fun. And especially if you're a fan of werewolf movies, because it's got some fun twists and turns on once again, who is the werewolf? and what the reality of the situation is, but it also has some fun werewolf designs in it. Yes, it is a lot of CGI. You know, everything is mostly CGI in it, but I thought it was pretty well done, enough that I think you can have fun with it. And the cast do a great job. It's full of mood and atmosphere and absolutely beautifully shot. So I just think if you're looking for a popcorn werewolf horror movie, something to not take too serious, this is a great pick. Snag a wolf, you gotta out wolf him. Hunter Hunter is a 2020 psychological horror movie. Written and directed by Sean Linden, it stars Devin Sawa, Camille Sullivan, and Nick Stahl. Joseph and his family live in the remote wilderness as fur trappers, but their tranquility is threatened when they think they're being hunted by a rogue wolf. So Joseph leaves his family behind to hunt it down. This isn't a normal wolf. It's just a hungry wolf looking for an easy meal. I will catch it. Wow, this movie is dark and twisted and not at all what I thought I was getting in for. Because this is not like any of the other movies on this list. This is a very twisted, absolutely fucked up film because it goes in some super dark directions with some really disturbing surprises, things that are absolutely make your skin crawl. It's also so full of tension. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. My stomach was even turning in knots. I was just like, what is going on here? What's gonna happen? You know, one of those kind of things. But as far as a film goes, it's extremely well made, but just be warned, this gets absolutely horrifically savage, especially at the end. But if you think you have the stomach for it and you like twisted, dark movies, then this is one you absolutely need to see. No, the next, no, the next, no, the next day. I found this forearm. The only way 
you can break the curse is to kill the person who started it all. Cursed is a 2005 horror comedy directed by Wes Craven and written by Kevin Williamson. The film stars Christina Ricci, Jesse Eisenberg, and Joshua Jackson. A werewolf loose in Los Angeles changes the lives of three young adults after they are mauled by the beast. Help me! Are you okay? Do you hear that? What's going on up there? So I feel like this movie is kind of underrated because yes, this isn't nearly as good of a film as it could have been if Wes Craven had had the freedom to make the movie he wanted to make. And supposedly there is a Wes Craven cut out there somewhere in the ethos that a lot of us horror fans have been dying to see. Who knows if we'll ever actually get it. But either way, I still think this movie is a lot of fun. But if this had been the film that Wes Craven was going for, this not only would have been one of the greatest werewolf movies ever made, but it could have led to a whole entire another franchise. Because that's kind of what Wes Craven did with Scream and Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, just these huge juggernaut franchises. And working again with Kevin Williamson, there was a good chance that this would have done the same thing. But unfortunately, the studio meddled with it, changed a lot of things, took a lot of the teeth so to speak out of this movie and it ended up being dumbed down and a little bit too much of a confusing teen mess but i still think it's a lot of fun there's still some great kills some great creature designs and just a really cool early 2000s vibe to it i always have a great time watching this little gym and definitely think it deserves more love the next, you know the next you know the next day i fell lou you're a wolf Wolf Cop is a 2014 Canadian comedy horror movie. Written and directed by Lowell Dean, it stars Jesse Moss, Amy Matasio, and Jonathan Cherry. The plot's about an alcoholic small town cop who transforms into a werewolf after being cursed. Holy hell. This is a stupid, but very, very fun movie. And that's why it's on this list. This is a movie that you gotta kinda check your brain at the door and just go in to have a good time. Nothing serious whatsoever, but it gets gory in the most fun way. It gets violent and over the top with crude humor. Just everything is turned up to level 11. There are so many surprises in this movie that just absolutely catch you off guard. But it's just a silly, fun little movie, very indie style, not a huge budget, and that's a lot of its charm as well. I think it's really smartly put together. It's colorful and exciting and just an absolute ride. Late Phases is a 2014 drama horror movie. Directed by Adrian Garcia Bagliano, it stars Nick Demisi, Lance Guest, and Tom Noonan. The story is about a secluded retirement community that is plagued by mysterious attacks until a grizzled blind war veteran moves in. Dolores! 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 This is such a badass, very little talked about movie. It comes at the werewolf genre from a really different angle because your hero is this old man protecting this old folks community that reminded me in some ways of Bubba Hotep with Bruce Campbell because it has that elderly character just kicking some ass, but it doesn't come at it from a campy, silly angle. It's a straight up werewolf movie meant to be serious. It's another small production movie that has a really solid cast that all give it their best and the special effects and creature designs are well done as well. This is an exciting, fun little movie that when you're talking about werewolf movies seems to be overlooked most of the time, but I think it's one that deserves more shine. So if you've never seen it, definitely get on it and check it out. You know the next, like a little dog. Ah! Maybe we're all werewolves. Ah! Are we really in a Mexican standoff right now? Baby, don't say Mexican. Just stand up. 
Werewolves Within is a 2021 mystery horror comedy directed by Josh Rubin from a screenplay by Mishna Wolf. It stars Sam Richardson, Milana Boyntrub, and George Basil. The story follows a group of people in a small town who get trapped in a snowstorm only to suspect that one of them is a werewolf. Everything here is a little questionable. Ranger! The people. The weather. Everything. This movie is so much fun. It's full of charm, it's witty, and just absolutely hilarious. But as much as it is a comedy, it definitely has horror as well. There's gore and some really gruesome kills and moments with the dark sense of humor. It's my favorite type of comedy horror movie where it is comedy, but it doesn't shy away from its horror elements as well. And it really is a whodunit. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the movie Clue. So it's like the movie Clue, but if you injected this creature feature into it as well. It's well directed and the cast does a fantastic job and they have great chemistry. They really feel like real people. But the dialogue is just so fantastic. It's witty and intelligent kind of humor that you gotta pay attention to. But it also is silly and campy at the same time. And for those werewolf lovers like me, it has some fantastic werewolf moments. This is a fantastic movie that is an absolute must for any fan of horror. You know, the next day, I found this boy. The Company of Wolves, where fairy tales end and nightmares begin. The Company of Wolves is a 1984 British fantasy horror movie. Directed by Neil Jordan, it stars Angela Lansbury, David Warner, and Sarah Patterson. A teenage girl in a country manor falls asleep while reading a magazine and has a disturbing dream involving wolves prowling in the woods outside her window. So up until just a few weeks ago, I had never even heard of this movie. But when I was doing research for the last werewolf list, I came across it. A lot of people had mentioned it being one of their favorite werewolf movies. So I figured, hey, I'll check it out. But it's very well done. For one, I love Angela Lansbury. Just she feels like the grandma I always wished I had kind of thing. I grew up watching Murder, She Wrote and enjoyed Bedknobs and Broomsticks, an old Disney movie as a kid. So I really enjoy her. So her being in it was just like icing on the cake. But it has really cool werewolves and wolves in general and creepy environments. And it's done in this really cool way where it almost feels like it's an anthology because it has these, these multiple kind of stories, but they're all connected. And it's moody with tons of creepy atmosphere and well done special effects and creature designs. This is an absolute treasure that I'm pleased to say is now one of my favorite werewolf movies. So it definitely deserves to be on this list. Know the next, know the next, know the next. Day. Bad Moon. Bad Moon is a 1996 Canadian horror movie. Written and directed by Eric Red, it stars Michael Paré, Mariel Hemingway, and Mason Gamble. The film's about a mother and her son who are threatened by her brother, who struggles to overcome the curse of lycanthropy. Yeah, poochie poochie. Come here, you friggin' stupid dog. This is absolutely a great little gem. Definitely another one that's very under the radar. Nobody really talks about this movie and it's kind of surprising. I get it on one hand because it is kind of low budget, doesn't have the greatest acting. It almost feels a little bit, like a little bit anyway, like a soap opera. It just kind of has that actor level, but this has some very cool special effects and absolutely one of my favorite werewolf designs, period. The practical effects in general are really why this movie's worth your time. But it also has an interesting, entertaining story with some fun characters and some really interesting plot twists. It's so entertaining and definitely deserves to get more love in the werewolf genre. So definitely check it out. Sheriff, how about we start acting like one? 
The Wolf of Snow Hollow is a 2020 horror comedy written, directed, and starring Jim Cummings. It also stars Ricky Lindholm, Chloe East, and Robert Forrester in his final performance. A stressed out police officer struggles not to give in to the paranoia that grips his small mountain town as bodies turn up after each full moon. It's a wolf. Or maybe it's a werewolf. No, let me just make this perfectly clear. There is no such thing as werewolves. Our killer is a guy, and I'm gonna find him, and I'm gonna kill and we're gonna bring him to justice. This is such a fantastic little movie and one that really flew under the radar. Even for me, I didn't hear about it until the beginning of 2021, a few months after its release. And that's wild because I feel like I keep up pretty close on movies that are being released. But there was a buzz that was growing pretty quick after its release. And as soon as I heard Werewolf, that caught my attention and immediately I had to get on it. And ever since, I've been highly recommending this movie because it's so, so well done. The acting is great. The comedy is a unique form of comedy. It's not overtly funny, but it's still really entertainingly funny at the same time. Especially as you see this cop slowly going down the drain into insanity. Like he just starts to really lose his shit. And it's a blast to watch. And it really twists all over the place. It keeps you guessing all the way to the very end where there is a really nice payoff. But I don't want to spoil too much because I know a lot of you still haven't seen this movie. But if you're a fan of werewolf movies and you've yet to see this, you definitely absolutely need to watch this. It's over on Amazon Prime right now, so if you have a Prime membership, it's free and it's one that I highly highly recommend. <laughs> no, the next like a little doggy bag. Brotherhood of the Wolf is a 2001 French action horror movie directed by Christopher Gans and stars Samuel Le Bihan, Vincent Castle, and Marc Dacascus. In 18th century France, the king sends a renowned scientist and his brother to hunt down a beast that's on a killing spree. But the true nature of the beast is not what anybody had anticipated. This is such an epic, amazingly shot movie. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's just this huge, grand spectacle of a movie that has this really cool werewolf period story interwoven all the way through. The costume designs and everything about it is just on this really grand level. And the cast do a really great job. It is French language, so you're gonna have to read subtitles, but I very much think it's worth it. I do know there is a dubbed version out there, so if you hunt a little, you could probably find the dubbed version. I always recommend the subtitle version if you can, because you just don't have those translation issues, and it usually always feels better in its native tongue. But this movie is just so brilliant. It's just this wonderful action adventure that just takes you on this extremely cool journey. And it goes in a lot of directions, ones you're not gonna really expect with an ending that is very surprising. I really enjoyed this movie and I think it absolutely is one of the greatest werewolf movies ever you know, done. You know the next, you know the next. Day, I found this <laughs> The Wolfman is a 2010 period horror movie directed by Joe Johnston and a remake of the 1941 film The Wolfman. It stars Benicio Del Toro, Anthony Hopkins, and Emily Blunt. After his brother is brutally murdered, an actor based in America returns to his ancestral homeland in England, where he is bitten by a werewolf. Hello, father. You've come for the funeral. What happened? Your brother's body was found in the ditch. Deep into torn to pieces. So this movie is a strange one for me because I'm not a huge fan of CGI and this is very CGI heavy, but there's still so much passion, so much love and so much effort and care put into everything in this movie that I can kind of look the other way and just kind of lean into it. So I very much enjoy it. But at the same time, it doesn't ever reach 
that top pinnacle for werewolf movies for me just because it doesn't have enough practical effects. But I do love the look of it. It has almost this graphic novel look about it. And hearing how much Benicio Del Toro fought for this movie and how much he put into this movie of his own money and effort and time and energy, he was just such a huge fan of this property and really wanted to make the best version of this movie he possibly could. And passion like that just translates onto the screen and you can really feel that and really see that. The wardrobe and set design, the way people talk, everything just feels meticulous and that there was so much detail in every single scene put into it. It's exciting and epic with fantastic acting across the board Everyone involved does a great job. I just think it's a gorgeous, epic movie that if you just go into it and don't judge it for what it isn't, but just enjoy it for what it is, you really will have a good time with it. I just think it's been way too harshly judged, and a lot of it is because of that practical effects. A lot of us horror fans, especially werewolf fans, we really want to see more of the practical effects. It just doesn't have that same power to us if it doesn't have the practical effects. And I get that, I really do. But I still think this movie is way too harshly critiqued and one that maybe it's time for a revisit. Either way, I have a great time with it and absolutely had to put it on this list. You know, the next day, I found this forearm. Wolfen. Wolfen is a 1981 crime drama horror movie. Directed by Michael Wadley, it stars Albert Finney, Diane Venora, Gregory Hines, and Edward James Olmos. The film follows a city cop who has been assigned to uncover what is behind a series of vicious murders. There's not a trace, not a speck of metal. Nothing softer could have ripped and ravaged like this. Is it an animal? Well, it ain't human. So I really enjoy crime thrillers. It's one of my favorite type of movie besides horror. I'm also a fan of true crime and just that world as well. And I love how this movie takes that crime drama and puts it into a horror movie because this movie is still horror. There's plenty of violence and disturbing imagery and uncomfortable scenes and just this creepy, ominous overall feeling. The werewolves with the whole Native American twist I really enjoy. Just in general, this movie has this really cool folklore, old world type of story to it. And I love the 1970s look and style of fashion, the way it's shot, that really kind of weird special effect they put on it when the wolf is about to attack. It's just fun, it has charm, but it's just also a well done movie that has a real interesting take on the whole werewolf story. Howl is a 2015 British horror movie directed by Paul Hyatt and stars Ed Spillers, Sean Pertwee, and Holly Weston. When passengers on a train are attacked by a creature, they must band together to survive the night. We follow the tracks, we all stay together. I don't see there'd be a problem. What is it? Run! Back on the train, everyone! Go, go, go! It's coming! I've been a big fan of this movie for the last few years because I had thought I had seen pretty much all the great werewolf movies that have been made until I heard about this, I think two or three years ago, and I immediately fell in love. It's got all the great creature designs of werewolf movies that I love. It's got exciting action, fun characters, great set design, a unique premise. It's got all those things that make a fun little movie. On top of all that, it has great mood and atmosphere. <laughs> For such a little talked about movie, I definitely think it deserves to be on this list. The Howling is a 1981 mystery creature horror movie directed by Joe Dante and based on the novel of the same name by Gary Brandner. The film stars Dee Wallace, Christopher Stone, and Patrick McNee. 
After a bizarre, near deadly encounter with a serial killer, a television newswoman is sent to a remote mountain resort whose residents may not be what they seem. A classic werewolf can change shape any time it wants, day and night, whenever it takes an ocean. What about killing it with silver bullets? Well, sure, silver bullets are fire. It's the only way to get rid of the damn thing. So it had been quite a while since I had seen this, but while making this list, I was trying to freshen up on a few movies that I'd seen, but it had been a long time. And I was surprised how well this one really holds up because it has such a cool, unique style and story to it. it. It goes in some different directions, especially because it delves into like a secret society and elements like that. It's not just your run of the mill werewolf movie. On top of that, it's creature designs. They are a little dated, but they're fun and they're definitely fantastic. Just really over the top wild designs. And even though some of them are silly, some of the designs are absolutely creepy as hell. And the cast is also a lot of fun, especially especially Dee Wallace, she really commits all the way to this performance. She's such a fantastic actress, and it's just really fun to see her so young, just giving it all she's got in this movie. I love that as much as this is a creature feature, it's also very much a fun little mystery as you slowly unravel what's going on. This is a real classic that absolutely deserves my number nine spot. Werewolf of London is a 1935 creature feature horror movie directed by Stuart Walker with special effects makeup done by effects pioneer Jack Pierce. It stars Henry Hall, Warner Olland, and Valerie Hobson. While in Tibet researching a mysterious flower, botanist Wilfred Glendon is bitten by a strange creature, causing him on the next full moon to undergo a startling transformation. There would be other murders tonight and tomorrow night. Also next month when the moon is full again. Unless you realize, sir, there is a werewolf abroad in London. As much as everyone loves and thinks that the universal classic The Wolfman is the first, this is actually predating it by five years. And it's definitely rough around the edges. It isn't as polished as The Wolfman. The design isn't, it doesn't do the full body kind of transformation like The Wolfman does, which was cool. But it does do its own kind of transformation. And as early on as this was done, it's still really interesting. This is another moody film that has a lot of atmosphere Atmosphere and is extremely well performed by the entire cast. In a lot of ways, it is also a tragedy, like a lot of these old classic movies where it didn't necessarily have happy endings, or if it did, it was it was in a weird, strange way that didn't quite feel happy. It also has its own kind of sadness to it. But I think it's a beautifully shot movie that does get forgotten a lot of times when people talk about the classics, especially when it comes to the classic werewolf movies. But it's one that holds a real soft spot for me and I absolutely love it. Ginger Snaps is a 2000 Canadian supernatural horror movie directed by John Fawcett and written by Karen Walton. The film stars Emily Perkins, Catherine Isabel, and Mimi Rogers. The story is about two teenage sisters whose relationship is tested when one of them is attacked and bitten by an unknown creature. Then during the next full moon, she begins to change. Let's get out of here. <laughs> This is such a fantastic movie that has to do with coming of age, but it doesn't forget that it's also a horror movie. It gets bloody, gory, and savage. I enjoy the creature designs and just how it has this weird, haunting, sexiness, but also terrifyingness at the same time because it's both alluring as well as uncomfortable. It really goes into some issues and deals with some things that I personally, as being a man, cannot really talk on, but I've heard plenty of women talk about how important this movie was for them but as a horror fan I could very much appreciate it and I absolutely have a great time with it no matter how many times I've seen it it was great to see it get the spotlight last year on the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs it just shows that this little gym is finally starting to get some of the recognition it deserves but there's no doubt in my mind that it's one of the greatest werewolf movies ever made
Well, you ask how a human can do that. My answer is simple. Telling Gwinnick by the mere definition of the word is a werewolf. Whir is a 2013 creature feature psychological horror movie. Directed by William Brent Bell, it stars A.J. Cook, Brian Scott O'Connor, and Sebastian Roche. In France, an American attorney defends a murder suspect who has a brutish appearance and a deadly secret. An American man and his young son were brutally killed last night. There is no factual evidence to indicate anything more than an animal attack. Yeah, at 1452, we apprehended the suspect. The man accused of these crimes, one Talon Gwinnick. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that disagree with me because a lot of people still haven't even seen this movie. It's one of those kind of hidden gems. But this is my list, and I know that it's not the right list. It's just simply my list and I absolutely love this movie. Yes it isn't perfect, there's a little CGI here and there that's not the best, but in general this is one of the most badass werewolf movies you could possibly ask for because it goes into these crazy mysterious directions that as you questioning what's going on and then it goes into these wild creature type of elements, supernatural elements, it does some things I've never seen a movie do, especially in the werewolf genre. It's very well acted with tons of fantastic action scenes. It's exciting and dramatic. It's got all the things that make for me an exciting, entertaining, just absolutely enjoyable werewolf movie. So it absolutely is on my list. You're bloody loving this, aren't you? Dog Soldiers is a 2002 British action horror movie. Written, directed, and edited by Neil Marshall in his directorial debut. It stars Sean Pertwee, Kevin McKidd, and Emma Cleesby. During a routine nighttime training mission, a small squad of British soldiers finds a bloody massacre with a lone survivor that identifies that what hunts them is werewolves. From here on in, the exercise is over. Exactly what is it we're fighting against? Lycanthropes. Werewolves to you and me. If this isn't the most fun werewolf movie, I don't know what is. I would love to hear what you think is the most fun, but for me, it is definitely this one because it has so much action, fun characters, great comedic timing, even though it's not really what I would consider a comedy. It has fun little one liners and shit talking that just keep you involved and really endear you to different characters. And holy shit, these werewolves are so badass. Just their design, it's unique, they're intimidating, they just looks so ferocious and savage in every way. This movie is so badass and definitely deserves to be on anybody's werewolf horror movie list. The Cursed is a 2021 gothic horror movie. Written and directed by Sean Ellis, it stars Boyd Holbrook, Kelly Riley, and Roxanne Duran. In 19th century France, a man arrives at a small country village to investigate the attacks of a wild animal. However, he soon discovers a much deeper and sinister force that has the townspeople in its grip. What's happening here? So the moment I walked out of the theater last year after watching this movie, I knew right then and there that it was one of my favorite werewolf movies of all time. Even though I am not hearing very few people talk about it, I don't know what's the deal. I don't know if maybe I'm just crazy for thinking it's so amazing. I've seen some of you enjoying it. but. As a whole, I just didn't hear much of anybody talk about it at all. And I know that part of the problem is, originally it was called Eight for Silver, and it won a bunch of awards at the indie film festivals and stuff under that name, but then they did a few changes to the special effects not a lot from what I heard, but they did a little, and then they changed the name and put it in theaters. And I think changing the name to The Cursed really hurt it, because so many people get it mixed up with that Wes Craven movie, Cursed. 
and it's nothing to do with it at all. It's not even slightly related. It's a very, very different movie, but it's so beautifully done. It's got mood and atmosphere and style and a lot of unique qualities because it doesn't do what your normal werewolf type of movie does. It has a lot of other lore and legends involved in it, so it's not your stereotype type of werewolf movie. It delves into these different angles to it to kind of explain what it is and how it is the way it is. And I just think it's so cool. It absolutely just drips in style. And I love the unique way that people transform. I'm trying to be careful about how I talk about it because I still know there's a lot of people that haven't seen this. But it has a very unique transformation type of thing is what I'll say. It doesn't do what you expect and it doesn't look how you think it would. I just think it's a fantastic movie and one of the best werewolf movies done in a very, very long time and absolutely makes my personal list for top 10 werewolf movies of all time. Silver Bullet, the last glimmering hope. Silver Bullet is a 1985 horror thriller directed by Dan Anadius and based on the 1983 Stephen King novella Cycle of the Werewolf. It stars Gary Busey, Corey Haim, and Everett McGill. In a small town, brutal killings start to plague a close-knit community. But Marty, a paraplegic boy, is convinced the murders are from a werewolf. So I did not see this movie growing up. I didn't discover it until just a few years ago, probably five or six years ago. But ever since I saw it, I absolutely fell in love with it. It just has all the things I love about Stephen King's stories, at least when they're put to film in the right way. There's just this small town charm and fun, quirky characters galore. Everything looks quaint, but yet there's this creepy, mysterious underbelly, things that you just can't quite see, and you know nothing is quite right. All these fun characters, but you know one of them has got a darker side. And it plays with you for a while, it's just giving you this fun little mystery to try to solve, trying to figure out who the bad guy is. Like, who is this, this werewolf? Who is this monster? And Gary Busey has one of his most entertaining roles in this movie. He's just a blast. The way he designs this crazy wheelchair for the little boy and just the whole fun adventure side of it. It's just one of those movies that just takes me back to being a kid with tons of nostalgia. I just absolutely love it. Good Lord. An American Werewolf in London is a 1981 comedic horror movie. Written and directed by John Landis, it stars David Naughton, Genia Gutter, and Griffin Dunn. The plot follows two American backpackers, David and Jack, who are attacked by a werewolf while traveling in England, causing David to transform into a werewolf under the next full moon. So this is most definitely on the Mount Rushmore of werewolf horror movies. And I struggled with it. I tried as much as I could to think about, did I actually love it that much or is it just the clout because this movie just goes back since basically I was born my whole life this movie has existed and is it really that great or is it just I love it because I grew up with it and because it's just so beloved in the horror community but I kept coming back to the same thing it doesn't get really any better it's just beautifully designed it has a tragic yet really entertaining story it has humor in a sick very twisted way but that still feels very horror the creature design, the transformation, as far as practically done, it doesn't get any better. There's definitely a few other ones you can argue are as good, but I don't think you could really say that anything practical wise has ever been done better. The acting is great. Everybody in it just feels like real people. And there just feels like a real friendship between David and Jack. Like the two of them really have this chemistry and you can believe and buy into this, this friendship that's going on. But it's so unique. Everything from the way Jack comes back as this living corpse kind of thing to haunt David. 
and the romance, like how he falls in love with this girl and the weird nightmare with the crazy Nazis, like just so much uniqueness, so much bonkers wildness in this movie, yet it all wraps around, all ties together for this really climactic, yet tragic, beautiful ending. And so the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know what? Yeah, it really does. It has to be right at the top of my list bar one. There's only one more, one other movie that I think deserves that top honor. But yeah, this one is absolute werewolf horror movie gold. The Wolfman is a 1941 creature feature horror movie directed by George Wagner and written by Kurt Syadmak. It stars Lon Chaney Jr., Evelyn Onkers, Claude Rains, and Belle Lugosi. The story is about Larry Talbot, who returns to his father's castle in Wells and meets a beautiful woman. But one fateful night, Talbot is attacked by a wolf, changing his life forever. So this to me holds the crown. Not only does it hold a soft spot for me, but it really is what brought us so many amazing werewolf movies. It's inspired so many filmmakers, so many special effects artists. Everybody that loves horror pretty much at least knows of this movie. Like you might not have seen this movie, but at the very least, you're familiar with the image of Lon Chaney Jr. as the werewolf. It's just such an iconic look. And it's the first one to do that full transformation into this full entire werewolf creature. But the thing that I love the most about this movie is the mood and the atmosphere, just the foggy night. You could just feel it the shadow, the way that it's just shot, everything about it, the sounds, the music, it just has this real ambiance, just amazing horror vibe to it. I cannot tell you how many countless nights I have went to sleep watching this movie. It's been in heavy rotation for me for many, many years now. There's something that's comfort food type of feel to it, but on top of that, it's just so iconic and it just has this fantastic vibe and energy about it. I absolutely adore this movie, and it is definitely my favorite werewolf horror movie of all time. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this, please hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell, cause that's the best way to keep track of this channel. And when I post videos like this, and I post videos like this every single week, I also wanna give a huge, massive enormous thank you to the ghost pirate crew to you guys over on patreon and to the channel members over here you guys mean so 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 much to me and if you would like to find out how you can become a member on patreon there's a link down in the description and if you want to find out how you can become a channel member and get that little cool little eye icon there's a link that says members down below but like always, thank you so much for watching. Please crush that like button. And remember, guys, horror can be fun. If you enjoyed this, click right here to see 10 horror movie recommendations on Tubi. And I'll see you guys next time.